The Super Nintendo was by far and away my absolute favorite console growing up. Having hundreds of games on it that I absolutely loved, I continue to play them to this day. And while publishers like Capcom, Squaresoft, and Konami get the lion's share of the praise, smaller developers and publishers also put out some absolute quality stuff. What's going on everyone? Jay here at the channel is SquarePegs. Today, we are ranking every game released by Sunsoft on the Super Nintendo. Now, if you're new around here and haven't watched the show before, what I ask for you to do is give us a subscription down below. We're on our way to a thousand subs. I'd love for you to be around for that. We'll be doing a giveaway at the time we hit that. Now, as I always do before I do my full rankings, I like to do a pre-ranking going back on nostalgia and kind of remembering what my experience was with them as a kid, or at least if I hadn't played them, what my opinion of them was at the time based on things like Nintendo Power and advertisements in comic books. So here we go, starting from the top. At the S rank, we have Tasmania. A rank gets us Death and Return of Superman and World Heroes. B rank brings us Arrow the Acrobat, Arrow the Acrobat 2, Lemmings, Daffy Duck the Marvin Missions, and Pirates of Dark Water. C rank brings us Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage, Roadrunner Death Valley Rally, Firepower 2000, and Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel. And D rank brings us the Acme Animation Library. Now, I'm gonna look at them as an adult, play them for you here and now, and tell you what I think about them over some beautiful high definition footage of those games. Let's take a look. I want to say thank you to snesguide.com. That is where I am grabbing all of the publisher information for any of these ranking videos, either SNES Guide or NES Guide. In this case, we are looking at Sunsoft and we are kicking things off with Acme Animation Factory. Now, I had high hopes for this one. The Tiny Toon Adventures one that was on the NES was actually pretty fun. It was shockingly well made. But this one, oh man, it just doesn't get there. And I don't know if this is because I'm just lacking the correct equipment. Like maybe I need the SNES mouse to make this work the way I need it to but I didn't have any kind of fun with this one at all. It's just kind of there. It's like a Dollar Tree version of Mario Paint, to be honest with you, and it just isn't very fun. I wanted this to be so much better than it was. I kind of expected it to be better than it was, but to me, Acme Animation Factory is a complete and total failure. It doesn't work correctly. It doesn't play well. It's an F. I remember seeing ads for Arrow the Acrobat in old issues of Justice League International and thinking this game was just going to be incredible. I loved the design of Arrow, I thought it looked cool, I thought the game looked like fun, and I just went through my childhood having never played it. This is actually the first time I've ever played the first Arrow the Acrobat, and I gotta be honest with you, it's about what I would expect based on my experience so far with Sunsoft, uh, spoiler for later on down in the review. But, I mean, the game is not bad. Like. The controls are pretty classic Sunsoft, like it's it's not a terribly well-balanced control scheme. Things are a little floaty and things skate a little bit, and it's kind of hard to control in particular spots. Like you actually need to kind of think three steps ahead of what you need to do, but that's okay because there's a lot here that kind of brings it up. The animations in the game are really well done. The character designs are a lot of fun. I really think it's kind of neat to be able to like fly around and do the different dives and stuff like that with Arrow. I think that's pretty cool. So the game is really, really fun. It's not perfect. Like I said, the controls are frustrating at times. The way, the way the game is designed is frustrating at times, not necessarily the controls, because the controls are good, but they suffer from the way that, the, that they were implemented into the design. It's a good game. It's an average game, though. It's nothing above a C, so that's where I'm going to put it. Arrow the Acrobat gets a C. Arrow the Acrobat 2 fixed a lot of the problems that I ran into with the first Arrow the Acrobat. I think the game plays a lot better. The controls are significantly tighter. Arrow doesn't feel like he's just going to float off the screen at any given second. I like the designs more in the game. I think the character designs are a little bit more interesting. The level designs are significantly better than the first game. And the animations are improved. It kind of hits every button that I needed it to. The music is better because it doesn't drop out like it did in the first one. And just simply put, it's a better game across the board. I don't really know how much more I can say about it. With the first Arrow the Acrobat, I kind of gave you what I thought about it. I mean, and all of that still applies here, just the weak points have been addressed. It's not a perfect game because it still does suffer from some of the same control issues. They're just lessened. So it doesn't quite get to an A, but it does get to a B. I, I kind of wanted to rank Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage higher than I do at the end here, so let, let me kind of talk through it so you can see where I'm going with it. This game looks incredible. The animations in it are spectacular, but unfortunately that's kind of where everything stops. Like, the combat in the game is laughable at best. The hit detection on the sprites is non-existent. 
Something that you swing and make a kick on on one part of the level will be a complete and utter miss three screens later or 30 seconds later in the same area. It just isn't balanced and it doesn't play well and it is decidedly not fun. It's a frustrating experience to play. It doesn't feel right. It just feels off. I am bumping this up from an F because of how good it looks, but unfortunately it just does not play very well. So Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage gets a D. Oh boy, another Looney Tunes game. All right, Daffy Duck the Marvin Missions. Uh, stop me if you've heard this one before. This game looks incredible. And, and as a bonus, past what happened with Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage, which only had one really good voice sampling, this has all kinds of great voice sampling, so it even sounds pretty good. But again, it just isn't fun to play. It's The controls in it are just awful. Like, you are just flying all over the level when you jump. You flow way too far, you move farther than you should, you move faster than you should, so you kind of feel like everything's on ice even when you're jumping. And I get that this is, you know, kind of representative of, of being Duck Dodgers here, where, you know, the equipment's not really the best, and I understand that, but you should have a little bit of control over your jetpack to kind of understand what's going on. It's just not there. Again, this game looks really good, and, and I might be ranking this higher just because of my love of Looney Tunes, but... It's a D. It's just not very fun to play. I remember vividly when Superman died. I was heavy into collecting comics at the time, and the death of Superman shocked me. It kind of shook me to my core. It wasn't something I expected, wasn't something I anticipated, and I kind of look back on those Halcyon days as, as things that I miss, because in an age where spoilers are you know, published to USA Today by Marvel and DC nowadays, being shocked, genuinely shocked about something, even though I know it did get spoiled in the papers, but it wasn't, I was 11 when it came out, I didn't read the newspaper, so it being spoiled in the papers didn't impact me in the slightest, but going to the comic shop and seeing that black cover with the armband inside of it, that hit me hard. And I remember when the game came out and loving it, and playing it now, I still love it, despite its very apparent flaws. Right from the start, you're playing a game as Superman, and that's already going to put you behind the eight ball, because no matter what, you're never going to be playing as Superman. It's always going to kind of be as a dumbed-down version of Superman, and that's exactly what you get here. Superman shouldn't be beat up by thugs. That's not how it should work, but it does happen in this game. But let's talk about the good stuff. The animations in the game look great. The character sprites are huge and just imposing and wonderful. The powers are pretty accurate to what Superman can do. You've got your heat vision, you can fly up in the air, fly down and knock everyone out on the screen. And it's a lot of fun. Level designs are a little weak. Uh, they're very generic side-scrolling beat-em-up, and that's okay in this case. I really like this game. It's a little easy to play. Or you can very easily trick the AI and just kind of stand on the corner and beat them up before they attack you. So it does make things fairly easy to get through, but I still love it. You know, it's it's not a perfect game, but I definitely have put tons of hours into it, and it's something I still enjoy. And hey, it was produced by Blizzard, which is kind of cool. For me, the death and return of Superman gets a B. Halfway through the rankings, let's take a look at where we currently stand. And the award for quite possibly the most generic sounding game name ever goes to Firepower 2000. I had no idea what to expect from this one. I'd never heard of this, I'd never played it before, and booting it up, I got kind of a futuristic Jackal. Like, halfway to Jackal, because Jackal is spectacular, and this game is pretty average. Let's, let's start with the good stuff. The design is really good. The effects that happen on screen are really well done. You can get a ton of enemies on screen without any slowdown being suffered, which is really cool and makes things kind of exciting and challenging as you play it. The controls are fine for the most part. You, you are moving a jeep around and you're shooting. It's not that difficult. But one of the things that is a little bit frustrating is that no matter what you do, unless you are holding down the firing button, you are going to shoot in whatever direction your Jeep is moving. And I realize that that's pretty normal for games like this, but it was something that I just kind of forgot, and it just frustrated me just a little bit. But once I figured that out, it got a lot more fun. Where my big problem with this game comes in is the weird balancing in this game. Like, I've, I played in the first level, and the first level starts out easy breezy, and then all of a sudden, it's unbelievably difficult. It was a little bit off-putting and kind of jarring to experience, 
it's still a fun game. I still had fun with it, and I'm definitely going to go back and play it some more, which I was pleasantly surprised by based on, you know, the name and the box art being terribly uninspiring. But I had fun with it. Do I think it's great? No. But do I think it's bad? Also, no. It's right in the middle of the pack. It's a fun game that just kind of averages out to a C. It is insanely difficult to turn a game that requires a mouse into something that works well with a controller. And props to Sunsoft for doing that here with Lemmings. Lemmings is a classic PC franchise. It's a, it's a puzzle game where you have to get Lemmings to a door. And the legend, of course, is that Lemmings will just march off the side of a cliff. Thanks, Walt Disney. And you are preventing them from doing that. Each Lemming is able to be assigned a job that allows them to do certain things, like hold a parasol if they're going to fall off a tall cliff, block other Lemmings from going in a certain direction to force them into one area, dig through the ground to get to an exit. It's a very simple game that becomes incredibly challenging the further into the game you get, and it is pulled off so well here on the Super Nintendo by Sunsoft. I love Lemmings, I loved it on the PC. This isn't quite a perfect one-to-one -one translation, but it is damn close. Lemmings, for me, gets an A. I was absolutely captivated by the Pirates of Dark Water cartoon when it debuted in the mid-90s, and I wanted nothing more than to just absorb myself into that universe because I loved it so much, and I was just absolutely enraptured with the storyline and the lore of the series. Getting a video game was icing on the cake for a series that died a death way too early. I, oh god, I just I wish that was released today because it would have been so amazing to see the story that they could have told. But we're here to talk about the game, and we're going to talk about the game, and we're going to talk about an absolute gem of a game on the Super Nintendo. Let's start with the obvious. You have three different characters that you can choose from. All of them have different attributes, all of them play differently, all of them look fantastic. The enemies in the game are massive. The sprites look great, the level designs are spectacular. About the weakest part of the game is that it's a little bit easy. The game isn't terribly difficult. It's a fairly straightforward and simple beat-em-up with not a lot of difficulty involved here but it is a ton of fun. If you have never played the Pirates of Dark Water game or seen the animated series, I strongly urge you to do both if you can track them down because they are absolutely fantastic. Or in lieu of that, watch the Toy Galaxy card I've linked above to see the history of Pirates of Dark Water. Dan and Greg do an absolutely spectacular job laying out the history of the series. It's magnificent. This is one of my absolute favorite beat-em-ups on the Super Nintendo. It's an unsung hero from Sunsoft. It is not a perfect game. It doesn't quite get to the S tier. But for me personally, as someone who loves the universe and the characters and the lore of the Dark Waters, I give it an A. 0 for 2 so far on Looney Tunes games. Let's see if we can get a hit with this one. Uh, this is Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally, and this is Sunsoft's answer to Sonic the Hedgehog. And it goes about as well as you'd expect. It looks really good. The, the animations are fantastic. It looks like Roadrunner. It looks like Wile E. Coyote. Uh, it plays like absolute garbage. It's way too fast. It's impossible to control. The Roadrunner doesn't really have an attack, and, or he does, but you gotta peck someone to death. I don't know. It's it's not fun. And that's really kind of what's boiling down to the fact with all of the Looney Tunes games that Sunsoft made so far, is that they're just not very fun to play. They look great. They are something that they should like hang their hats on from an art perspective, but from a gameplay perspective, these things are murder. They're just not a good time. Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally, just like Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage and Daffy Duck the Marvin Missions, lots of alliteration going on to the Looney Tunes games. This one, unfortunately, also gets a D. Shout out to Tasmania for being Crash Bandicoot before Bandicoots were cool. This, this, this is a Crash Bandicoot game. I mean, let's just be honest. Let's call a spade a spade. Glorious, beautiful Mode 7 graphics as you run through the countryside of Tasmania, chasing down kiwi birds for Taz to snack upon. And yeah, I mean, it's it's Crash Bandicoot. You're, you're running from behind, you jump over obstacles, you are going around corners. I mean, it's kind of Crash Bandicoot, it's kind of a racing game because you do have to take turns, you can't just run straight. It's a really interesting game. I remember really liking this one a lot as a kid, and it doesn't quite live up to my lofty expectations of what I played as a child, but this game is still a lot of fun. Like, this is probably the best, not even probably, this is absolutely the best Looney Tunes game that Sunsoft made. It looks good, it sounds good, it plays well, uh, the animations are spectacular, and it's just, it's just stupid, dumb, easy fun. Tasmania gets a B. 
All right, finally a fighting game. We got World Heroes here, and I remember loving this game as a kid. I used to think this thing was just one of my favorite games. I remember renting this regularly from the video store and having just a ton of fun with it. And wow, boy, unfortunately, are those memories just clouded from childhood because playing this now as an adult, this game is brutal. So I started out just going in with default settings, default controls, the whole nine, and it controls terribly. It's very slow. It's hard to pull off special moves. It's just not fun. So in my second fight, I actually went in and I dumbed it almost all the way down. I changed the control scheme to be the alternate control scheme, and it was a little bit better, but oh, it's just still not very fun. The, the character designs are fairly unimaginative. The combat isn't very good. It's pretty much a generic fighting game. Like, if you were to look up a template of what a fighting game should be, it would probably be World Heroes. It's not very good, but, I mean, it exists. Like, it doesn't crash when I play, so it's not an F. It works. It's just not very well done. So, it's a D. You know, earlier we had probably the weakest video game name ever for Firepower 2000, but now we go swinging in the other direction wildly with Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel, and yeah, it's... It's exactly what it sounds like. This is a spin-off of the Air of the Acrobat series, which if you play it, you can tell because it plays like the first Air of the Acrobat, warts and all. So you can probably tell where this review is going to go. But let's let's go in depth. Uh, visually, the game looks really good. Zero is a very fun character design. He looks kind of like a squirrel Chuck Norris. The enemies in the game are fun to look at. And the level designs themselves look pretty good. Where the big problems come in with this game are much like the first Era of the Acrobat, the controls and the sound. Uh, from a control perspective, things just are a little bit too loose, and it's a little bit weird to have to do a double jump that doesn't really work. It's, it's, it's weird, because sometimes you'll jump higher, but sometimes you won't. You'll just jump to the same height, which is very bizarre to me. And then from the sound perspective, I kept having issues where my music would just completely drop out, which was kind of annoying, because the sound effects in the game just aren't really great to hear over and over again. It's not a great game, but it's not a bad game. And, and I feel like I'm saying that a lot for these Sunsoft titles, but this one is, again, kind of like Air of the Acrobat, just kind of middle of the road. It's a, it's a C. Final thoughts on Sunsoft. So while I didn't get any S ranks out of this, and there was a lot of middling stuff and things that I don't remember playing quite as poorly as they do now that I'm an adult, there was definitely still some quality stuff in there. Death and Return of Superman will always be a game that I truly enjoy. Tasmania was Crash Bandicoot before Crash Bandicoot was cool. Arrow the Acrobat 2 is actually a surprisingly solid game. Lemmings plays like lemmings. I mean, what more could you ask for? And Pirates of Dark Water is an absolutely A-plus quality beat-em-up based on one of my absolute favorite animated series from when I was a kid. Air of the Acrobat and Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel might have ranked higher if they had performed better for me. I had really curious sound dropout when I was playing them, and that really knocked them down a couple notches because hearing the same sound effects over and over and over again is kind of off-putting. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of these rankings. If you want to see me do more, please let me know, and let me know what publishers you'd like to see me tackle next for the Super Nintendo, NES, Genesis, Dreamcast, hell, I don't care. Anything you want to see, let me know, and I will do my best to make that happen. If you enjoyed the video, please like, please subscribe if you're new around here, and while you're there, ring the notification bell so you can keep up to date with the uploads of the channels. We're doing two a week, and if you really dig what I do around here, please consider becoming a Patreon sponsor down below, or check out our merch. Links to both will be in the pinned comment, as well as all of our presence on social media across the web. Until next time, I've been Jay. Appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me as we rank every Sunsoft game on the Super Nintendo. Until next time, remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.